We're still gonna meet with a meal though. Yeah. I thought I was gonna meet a meal first and then Judy, but I guess we're gonna meet a Judy first. Thanks to Andy's brisk walking speed, the two of us make it back to Judith's place rather quickly. Even more than usual, the inside of the house is spacious and inviting. Doesn't look like it to me, you know, looking literally at the background, but you know. Looking back, sis. I breathe in the cool air as Judith greets her sister in the kitchen. The sweet smells of vanilla extract and chocolate fill my dry nostrils. Andy slaps my back and gives me a thumbs up. Stop slapping me, Andy. <laughs> she slaps me so much. Good job cooling down from our run. I'm gonna go change and jump into the pool. Judy footed your swimsuit this morning and put it in the same spot as, you, as last time. So make sure to change quick and have her go out with you, alright? Without another word, Andy dashes away from me and toward her bedroom, running past the kitchen in the process. Hey, sexy. I brought the cabin over, so hurry up with that. What? He's here already? Why didn't you call me? I still have much left to do that. I, so, so much that left I need to do. Adapt. Improvise. <laughs> Overcome. You're so mean. Ugh. I hear Andy laughing maniacally in the distance as she runs up the stairs and slams the door to her bedroom shut. I peek around the corner into the kitchen and wave sheepishly to Judith. Judging by the appearance of things, as well as the gentle scent of baked goods drifting from the oven, she appears to have been in here for a while. Um, hi. Those cookies in the oven were it's supposed to be a surprise. I'm sorry, but could you go sit over there or something and look away for a couple of minutes? I'm just going to put these extra ones in the fridge, so it won't take long for me to finish. I promise it'll be quick, so I'll look away for a bit, please. Daga. Kotoaru. No, um. I mean, I feel like this is an actual choice. Huh? What if I say. Yeah, what if I defy your request? Everybody's been telling me what to do. What if I don't do what you want me to do? Is it okay if I help you? You want to help me bake? Are you sure? I didn't know baking was something you were even interested in. W wait, no, that's a, that's a terrible idea. It's not allowed. These macarons are for you. I have to bake them, otherwise they won't be a gift anymore. I look around the kitchen. Not only is the room an absolute mess, but the counter is a complete cover of platters of cooling macarons. It's an absurd amount of sweets. He's is easily been here since morning. Still, it does sound really fun. Making something together. Even after all this time, we've never done anything like that before. And today should be as fun as possible, shouldn't it? Okay, I really like that actually. We can just give the extra, extra macarons we make to Andy. That way, these other ones are still a gift. There's probably more than enough for you at this point anyway. In hindsight, I might have gone a bit overboard. Oh well, what's done is done. Judith opens up the cupboard and pulls out a solid black apron. Put this on, we'll get started. I'll just be careful around the oven, though. I've already burnt myself a couple times. It's a lot easier to do than you think. I wrap the apron around my back and strike a goofy pose. I do a Jojo pose uh, for her in the middle of the kitchen. Hey, you're so sweet for offering the help. Let's bake. Let's bake. I do my best to help Judith in the kitchen. After a few minutes, however, it becomes painfully obvious that I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> well, well, now put that cream in the piping bag and pipe into that cookie. Make sure it's nice and even. Perfect. Even so, she doesn't seem to mind. If anything, she seems to enjoy walking someone through the process of making things. I put the last batch of macarons in the oven and begin cleaning the dishes while Judith wipes down the counters. We talk about everything while we clean. From our adventures over to the summer, to her sister's absurd mannerisms, and her sexual harassment of everybody around her. No, um, it's probably the, the most I've talked to anybody, anyone all day, but that's just the way Judith is. Other than Violet, she's usually the person I've gone, always gone along best with. It's that infectious kindness of hers. She could charm a siren right out of the ocean if she wanted. A siren. You know what I'm saying? Yay, they're done. Don't even think about touching the oven, though. I'll pull them out for us. 
True to her word, Judith coaxes the macarons out of the oven and places them on top of the stove in one swift, elegant motion. Oh, these these ones turn out great. But come on over, Oliver. Breathe it in. I do as I'm told and walk over to the stove. He's right. The chocolate of the cookie mixed with the smooth vanilla aroma of the cream is unquestionably seductive. It's a bit overwhelming, though, especially at this range. But I love baking. Even my sister isn't that much of a jerk to me after she eats one of these. Almost like magic, how much better she treats me afterwards, but I guess that's why they're called sweets. Judith inhales, her eyes flooding with pleasure in the process. If only we could solve our problems with something as simple as baking. Oh well, too late now. What's done is done. We should probably go and jump in the pool. I'm sure Andy wasn't expecting us to stay in here this long. I cleaned your swimsuit, by the way. It's in the bathroom, next to the sink. Okay. We can choose to regress, however. Okay. This, this, this seems like the most fun option, though. Oh, you know, or like each other, you're baking and stuff. Um, I regress. Back here. Uh, yeah. What if I jump in the pool then? All right. I guess that makes sense. No reason to stay in here and do nothing. It's not what you want. It wouldn't have been long, but I guess Andy's already heading out there, so... I've got my hands full anyway. You're probably all tired from exercising and want to cool off. So yeah, you should probably go do that. I clean your swimsuit, by the way. It's in the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a little passive-aggressive there. It's like, oh, okay, you don't want to stay here and talk with me? Okay. All right, bye. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, regress. And we, we can also say, as you wish. We'll just sit here. You just smile sweetly as I make my way back to the living room. Again, I don't know if these choices actually, like, matter. You know? When you regress, does it, like... Like, reverse your choice so that you can choose a different choice? Is that what is that what that means? Or I'm not sure what it means exactly. I, I've just been using it to explore, you know, every branch. Anyway. Uh, she asks the same questions everybody has been asking about college. Probably knowing we don't have much time for a super deep conversation. I give her the same responses I've been giving everybody else, and her polite little talk comes to a close. Alright, we should be good now. I'm almost done. Okay, interesting. So it just ends the same way. So th those those things are really short. Um, but the one that's like... I feel like the best option is if we help her, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just gonna do that real quick. Because I like... Oh, I did not mean to skip everything. Okay, well, try again. Load. I'm just gonna load here. I didn't know that... You know, usually skipping doesn't skip, like, uh, unread text, you know? Maybe that maybe that's what it was? I don't know anyway. Because this was this option was chosen for some reason. Anyway, it's too late for that because technically I've already seen the text since I skipped it, so I don't know. Anyway, whatever. I'm just gonna like. Okay. I can be careful. As it turns out when you hit the skip button, it actually skips uh you know, everything. At least by default. Which is surprising. Usually it doesn't skip everything, but you know, most visual novels in press skip, it's only skipping text that you've already seen, not text that you haven't seen. I think that would defeat the purpose, unless you're trying to speed run the game for some reason. I don't know. You speed run the visual novel, just put unseen text as a skip option and just skip everything. And there you go. <laughs> you know, that's the visual novel. Uh, this is a weird way to play the visual novel. It's just I don't I don't feel like there's any reason to skip unseen text. Well, there's one reason. If for some reason, like um, you're playing the game on a different computer, maybe, possibly, it'd be hard to like get to a point where you were last last time exactly. But I guess that's the way to do. You know, if some for some reason you lost the like overall like global save. All right, so back here. Um, 
I cleaned your swimsuit, by the way. It's in the bathroom next to the sink. Give me a second to shove these into the fridge and I'll meet you outside. Alright. I grab my swimsuit from the bathroom and start changing into it. As I pull my shirt over my head, a putrid stench floods my senses. And he was right. That's not terrible now. I completely forgot about that. What's wrong with me? I definitely smelled this bad when I was baking Judith too. And she never mentioned it once. Yeah. Another act of kindness for sure. How strange is it that every single time I finish interacting with that woman, I end up feeling more and more indebted to her. A slick, slimy kind of guilt bubbles up inside as I pull my swimsuit over my legs. It's funny how something as disgusting as guilt can be born from kindness. Funny, but not unusual in the slightest. She probably hates her so much, I think, as I leave the bathroom. Hmm. Who hates her so much? She probably hates her so much. I don't know what that's referring to. Hmm. Like referring to... I mean, I'm assuming referring to Judith, but like, who hates her? Her sister? Not necessarily. I don't think it's a sister that hates her. Who hates her? Violet, maybe? Hmm. Very ominous. Anyway, I throw my dirty clothes into the washing machine and make my way over to the pool. I see a pair of muscular legs sticking out of the pool, flex and unwavering. <laughs> oh, yes. Those muscular legs. Uh, Adley's probably seeing how long she can do a handstand underwater again. As I make my way into the pool, her legs finally cave in on themselves and dip underwater. Okay, here we go. Don't forget the swimsuits, uh, sprites. Gotta make sh swimsuits for your anime girls in your visual novel for the fan service. Uh... I guess she's wearing a one piece. I mean, it's still. <laughs> anyway. Ugh. 52 seconds. Damn, so close. Oh, hey, Cam. Is Judy still baking? You didn't just leave her alone in there, did you? Oh, there's there's her classic swimsuit. She seems taller. <laughs> Sorry, it took so long. I couldn't find the sunscreen. Oh, no, there you go. Because they're, they're not in the water. I was thinking of twins, right? So they should be the same height. Uh, Judith half runs, half skips over to the water, usually dipping her body into the cool, clean water. He spent that long putting on sunscreen? Why? It's not even hot today. Or, no, that, that's Andy saying that. Why? It's not even hot today. You know I burn easy. I'm just being cautious. I still don't get that. I don't burn at all, Judy. And doesn't the whole being my twin thing mean basically you have the same stuff going on or whatever? What makes you so frail? Frail is a pretty mean way to put it. You just get outside a lot more than I do. So your skin's adapted to the sun, that's all. And you're more likely to get skin cancer. <laughs> but anyway. I guess so. Andy shrugs, jumps up a little bit, and does a front flip into the pool. After a second or two, her legs are sticking out of the water again. Signaling to, uh, to us that she's done talking. Judith, now even closer to me, sinks back down a little and starts floating her back. Hey, will you pull me around the pool for a little bit? I'm probably just tired, but I don't really feel a whole lot like swimming right now. You can just drift for a while, right? You don't mind. I don't mind, but I meditate for a bit on why is it that anybody else Everybody always gets so physical when they swim. Maybe it's because of the initial weightlessness that comes with being in the water. It's a freeing sensation, I suppose. Something relaxing enough to make even the most jaded individuals feel light and reckless. Or maybe it's just the chemicals in the pool making us feel loopy. Or making the frogs gay. Or whatever. <laughs> whatever it is, I don't really care. I drag my friend's body across the surface of the water. Like a corpse. <laughs> Judith enjoys it at first. Her bouncy laughter filling the stagnant Florida air whenever I move around the way she doesn't expect. But as the water settles and the heartless sun bakes overhead, things once again grow silent between us. And so I simply drag her around, doing only what's expected of me. All I can think about is how you're actually leaving today. And how there's a very real chance I'll never see, I'll never see you again. 
unless I keep myself busy. That's the only thing I'm able to really think about. Been like that for a while now. After we destroyed the seed. <laughs> okay, the seed is like another thing. It's like, there's the locker, the underworld, and the seed. I guess there wasn't much left to distract me. No adventures to have. No sirens left to fight. No mysteries to solve. Hmm, sirens. What capital? So sirens, I guess? Or are they like the... Like the dungeon bosses? Hmm. No people to protect. The only thing left in my, in my life was the mundane reality of your departure. But if all that's left is normalcy, then shouldn't I be happy? Because that's what we're fighting for, right? For the people in the sirens' call to be normal again. That's why we all risked our lives. And it worked. Our gamble paid off. In spite of everything, the people here are normal again. It's all because of us. I should be ecstatic. But even though we won, even though everyone is so much happier now, you're still gonna leave. Nothing can be done about it. At least against the sirens. I could always fight back. I could always fight. With my, like, level, you know, 99 spells, you see. Because, I, I, I don't know, Judah seems like a... Well, he's just like a mage-type character, you know? If this had, like, an actual JRPG section. Maybe a mage or a healer, I guess. I mean, just based on her personality. But not this. I can't fight this. All I can do is get dragged around. You know, I've thought about just embracing it. This helpless feeling I have. But I guess that's kind of hard to do when you're related to someone as stubborn as Andy. Can't really be a quitter. I'm pretty sure that's why I'm opening up to you like this. Feels like the last thing I can really do short of just saying goodbye. That's still pretty pathetic though, isn't it? 58 seconds! <laughs> ah! I don't get it. Why do I have such shrimpy lungs? Judith lightly shakes herself free from my grip and looks up to me. Or looks up at me. Alright, your turn. You can float around for a bit. I'll pull you. I flip into my back, letting Judith grab a hold of my ankles. The grip is tight, like the plaster of a cast. And yet she ends up dragging me around the pool aimlessly. Moments like these really are a blessing, aren't they? I don't know, it's kind of weird actually. I don't know, it's like just pulling each other on the pool. Is that is that how people... How conversations of the pool dragging each other. Anyway, just being able to be in the same place as your best friend. Being able to do all the nothing you want with someone you love. I don't think there's anything more, more worthwhile. I really don't. But if this normal little moment of, of ours is such a blessing. Why can I enjoy any of it? Hmm. Ominous. Anyway, I guess it's time then. Shame you can stay a bit longer. But you're an adult now. You got junk you gotta do. We can respect that, right? Yes, of course. Bring it in, Slim. And he closes in and gives me a form, commanding hug. Thanks for spending some time, my sister. You might not feel like it, but trust me, you did the right thing. Andy pulls away and hands me a water bottle. Well, I acquired Andy's water bottle. Whatever you end up doing over there in Nashville, I want you to stay hydrated. Being a doll isn't going to be easy, but I see what you're capable of. Why is that like shirt like realistic? <laughs> you know, it's just so realistic for some reason. I don't know. I mean, this one as well. It's just a dark color for some reason. It just makes it so ultra realistic. Like the shading and like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, the way the shirt, like, wraps around her body is just, like, real <laughs> for some... I don't know, anyway. As long as you remember our training, then I'm sure you can get through anything. I'll see you soon. Stop slapping. She slaps everybody. All the time. Unless, I don't know, was she one that slapped her, or did she slap herself? You know, kind of, like, preparing herself? Anyway. Right. Thank you for being my friend. Please, take these with you and eat some after you've moved in. He hands me a plate of chocolate macarons, lovingly prepared as always. These should still be your favorite, right? It doesn't matter you're not eating them on Sunday, does it? Sorry, I wish I could have made you something a little less perishable. That's why they're gift-wrapped, I guess. At least this way, you'll have something from you once the cookies are all gone. 
I wish I could do a bit more, though. I wish... Ah, she jump scared me. She kills me. Um, a Judith dives into me and bears her head into my shoulder. You're a kind person, Oliver. Never let anybody make you think otherwise. Goodbye. I mean... I... I'll see you soon. Whoop. Stay sweet. Judith pulls away and dashes back to her house. Andy, as far as ever, gives me one final thumbs up before following after her sister. Okay. Got a lot of journal pages. Should I read them? <laughs> you know, when should I read them, actually? I'm not sure. Alright. We said goodbye to Ashton, Andy, and Judith. Double. Double combo. Um, but now we need to say goodbye to uh, Emil as well. Say goodbye to Emil. And then finally Violet. In that time... I guess, you know, when we get home, I guess, is when we're gonna say goodbye to Violet. Where is Violet? We never met her the entire time. Was she, maybe she was with uh, her mother, maybe. Uh, maybe that's the implication? Maybe I missed that. I'm not sure. Anyway. Whoop. Of Mice and Men. I am. The nerd. Except he's like the cool nerd, you know, he's the bishi nerd, you know? And usually when, when you think of nerds, a stereotype, he's like, I'm just a nerd. But then there's like the, the cool anime boy nerd. Where it's like, I'm just so smart all the time. And I'm so cool and hot. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, but watch out, college board coming through. Somebody I don't recognize says something to me while I'm walking. As nondescript and generic as this moment is, I still make an effort to smile and wave as we pass each other by. All right. I don't know when I'm gonna, I'm not sure. I kind of don't want to break the, the pacing of the story. At the same time, I am curious about these journals, you know? Journals. These journals, though. Yeah, okay. A bunch of these journals. I'm missing these pages, however. 15 to 17. There's a lot. Well, well just, I want to, just as a, as a sample, let me just see what the first one is, right? So, page number one. Oliver, I have written you some more notes that might be nice to refer to in the coming days. These are likely to be the last batch, as between the two of us, we should be en enough on the same page to proceed with things accordingly. I appreciate you going so far outside your comfort zone with all of, the all of this. I know it isn't always easy to work with others, even those you consider close friends. In the face of that difficulty, consider the remaining pages in this journal as a gift. After all, you are the only other person I know that goes through, through papers so voraciously. I respect that, so do these extra pages as you wish. Moreover, try not to be shy about sharing your craft. We all admire it. Stay sharp, a meal. Hmm. Some kind of journal. Extra pages to go through? Hmm, interesting. Well, maybe I'll go through that later, a little bit later. Once I collect more pages, maybe. Because I'm missing some pages here. Maybe after we talk to the meal. It'll be a lot though, I don't know. It's gonna be just a lot of just looking at I don't know what it like. Anyway. Alright. I find myself at the local library. Lucky for me, Emil is here too. His rad sneakers. In fact, he's actually putting his sneakers on the on the on the on the, on the shelf here. It's gonna make that a little dirty. That's very rude. Anyway, as a Zora as absorbed as he seems in his reading, I can't help but feel as if he was aware of my presence the moment I stepped into the lobby. Ah, you're here. Excellent. Glad you could make it. We have to keep our discussion down, unfortunately. There's a chess tournament happening over on the other side of the library. Do you Did you finish your copy of the book, perchance? I don't know, actually. I have no idea if I can. Uh, what book? <laughs> you know? What book? Let's just say... Mm, almost. I'm at the last chapter. I see. Well, it's no trouble. 
I was about to finish my second breakthrough anyway, so that should give you time to finish up. I regress. I regret my decision. And, and let's just say I did finish it up. Fantastic. There's a lot of juicy stuff in here that I really would like to dig into with you. Okay, I can regress again, but... Mm. Namely, Mersault. I'm interested to see what you thought of him as a character. Just give me a second to go to the bathroom and then we can get started. Okay, so it's like a reading club. <laughs> By the time I take my seat and fish out my copy of The Stranger, Amiu has already made his way back to me. After a brief acknowledgement of his presence, he sits down across from me and begins reading. The technique that the author uses is remarkable. He writes in such a way that, although Mursada is detached, he's still quite relatable. Hardly the heroic type, though. While he is technically the protagonist, and his clarity in a pitiable situation, I can't say he doesn't deserve what happened to him. Tell me, what do you think Mursad's greatest sin was? <laughs> Alright. Um, the Stranger. What is The Stranger? I've never read it myself. Is that a real book? Sounds like a real book. I have no idea. I can choose his refusal to be an honest member of society. The actual murder. He shot that guy five times. <laughs> He's practically faultless. Society has failed him. Uh, sure. Let's make the, this one. I see. Siding with the people then. I agree to an extent. I'm having trouble recalling a single moment in the work where he chooses other people's needs over his own desires. It's a bit childish in a way, after all. He's a grown man. You should know that sometimes you have to play the game. You cannot live a fulfilling life on carnal pleasures alone. Smoking, drinking, and sex can only get you so far. You need to have some sort of meaningful connection to the people around you. When that old man's dog disappeared and Mursal made zero attempts to comfort him, he told me everything I need to know about his character. Even if your sympathy is fake, you should still act on it. Relating to others is how you form connections after all. And as social creatures, connections are what gives our lives meaning. They're what help us reach out and find the truth. I reach out, I stand up. No, um, what? Rosal should know this, and likely does, but feigns ignorance in the pursuit of his own desires. It's not something worthy of death in and of itself, but as even Marcel implies, it is a lifestyle that can ultimately lead to, or ultimately lead to an early death. My question might have been a bit too reductive, though. I think our hero's fate can be ascribed to a conflict of different factors, rather than just one fault he might have as a person. Alright. Well, obviously you want to see all the... I want to see all the uh, options. Let's see. Uh, so what was his sin? The actual murder. He shot that guy. <laughs> I respect the pragmatic nature of that answer. In a purely legal sense, yes, you are correct. While one could argue that he's complicit in the violence against Raymond's girlfriend, the crime or saw is charged with is as, of course, murder. He might have been manipulated by Raymond, but ultimately his actions are his own. So yes, you are technically correct. And like Ashen always says, technically correct is the best kind of correct. Even so, that viewpoint doesn't give us much to chew on. Don't kill each other is a rather elementary message, so I'm pretty sure that isn't what Kamis was going for when constructing the work. Still, musing aside, murder is a terrible crime. So I can hardly fault you for thinking that is Mursal's greatest sin. I'm sure the most dangerous minds in existence have fancied themselves as philosophers and intellectuals, and in doing so, lost track of life's most simple of truths. So at the end of the day, that viewpoint of yours might be the only one that truly matters. My question might have been too, rebu bit, bit too, bit too reductive, though. Regress! <laughs> what about... He's practically faultless. Society has failed him. Society is at fault. That's a rather spicy take. I'm not sure I entirely agree with the fearless overtones of that sentiment. While he was given the gun by Raymond, Mersault is the one who pulled the trigger. Although I will agree that it is a bit, is it a, it is a bit surreal that his personality traits were ultimately what was used to pr prosecute him. So as much as I don't agree with the whole of your statement, it does present us with a glimpse of the truth. The world has no use for a strange person like Mersault. 
and so he was instantly vilified in the court of his peers. The nail that sticks up is hammered down, as they say. But perhaps the sweetness of the hammer is an evil in of itself. If society has no use for you, then you are purged from society. That's probably why there is so much pressure placed on people like us once we graduate. Still, as heartless as the world can be, ultimately we are the only ones responsible for our actions. Our soul could have behaved in a kind manner, even if it was a fake kindness. He could have refused the gun. He could have run away. But that's not what he chose. And I'm sure as you know, choices are everything. You know, as I pick choices in this visual novel and then revert back easily. But anyway, my question might have been too, a, bit, a bit too reductive though. Our heroes can be described to a complex of different factors. The reality is, is a result is a matter of many sins. So trying to narrow it down to one great sin is probably impossible for us. The only one who would know the true extent of his sins would be Mursat himself. Or in this case, the author. I doubt outsiders like us are adequate judges. Still, it makes for a fun discussion. I'm glad Judith was kind enough to recommend this one to us. Mia holds up the book in his hand and smiles. As always, she has a remarkable taste. I suppose it's no surprise that her preferred reading material turned out to be so divine. It's rather grim subject matter for such a classy woman, though. But I suppose this world of ours is full of little curiosities like that, isn't it? Amiu checks his pocket watch, furrowing his brow in the process. I'm afraid we'll have to end it here, though. I didn't realize I kept you for so long. There are a few things I had to let you know before we depart, however. Amiu gets up from his chair and leans in next to me, lowering his voice as he speaks. My hypothesis was right. The underworld is now completely barren. I've been going in after midnight with Ashton to check for hostiles. We scout every inch, square inch of that place. Unfortunately, it seems like eliminating all of them did not have an effect on what time we can actually enter. We still only have that ten minute window after midnight. Ah yes, the dark hour. However, for the time being, I think it's safe to assume there was a causality between the sudden death incidents and those monsters. So, as long as things are peaceful back there, Siren's call should also remain safe. Emil moves back from my ear, now speaking in a much more relaxed tone. I'll likely be doing some research in that environment after you've left. After all, there's still so much about it that we don't know. So until that opening closes for good, I'll make sure our team is both informed and safe. I know, this is likely nothing you aren't already aware of but I figured you would gain some degree of comfort hearing this information from me directly. Especially considering recent accusations regarding your actions. Emil bites his lips and breathes out a heavy sigh. <sighs> About that, by the way. I'm willing to observe if Vine's claims have any merit. If there is an objective and observable negative change in the population, I will do my best to record and report my findings. I will even take steps to reverse it if that's possible. However, I don't know how much time I have to gather the data before the locker shuts itself forever. So, for the time being, I will prioritize my field research. I don't know if you two are still together, but if you see her today, would you kindly let her know that I'm willing to be amicable about this, even after her assertions? Emil grabs my shoulder and stares intensely at me as if his eyes were a shovel digging to wet soil. Know this, even in your absence, we will keep this town safe. No matter what is said or what ends up happening, we will keep you safe. If nothing to worry about. Amiya pulls away and smiles. We should probably return our books now, seeing as you're not going to be back here for a while. Shall we then? place our copies of The Stranger on the front desk and thank the librarian, who smiles absentmindedly as she accepts our returns. Mio, now likely done with his session in the library, escorts me into the lobby. Well, it looks like this is it, for now at least. Oh, there's still so much I'd like to discuss, but I suppose it's best for us to wait until your next visit. In the meantime, I will do my best to act as your viceroy. If anything of no occurs in your absence, you can trust me to mail you the details as soon as possible. 
Mia walks over and shakes my hand, giving me his pocket watch in the process. Thank you for the great discussions. I acknowledge Mia's sincerity by reassuring. Thumbs up. They give him a thumbs up. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Stay sharp. All right, yeah, we got his pocket watch. It's pretty cool. I'm assuming that's important to him. You know, he just gave it to us. Um, it's later than you think it is. Okay. I'm pretty much out of time, and so I go back to Violet's house and pack the rest of my things. Eventually, Miss Lawrence comes home, and we load everything I own into her car. And as we're about to leave, though, Miss Lawrence gets a dangerous weather alert on her phone. Apparently, a once benign tropical storm off the coast has swollen to the size of a massive hurricane, suspending not just my flight, but every flight going out of Florida. <laughs> okay, you know, I did mention, like, hurricanes in the prologue. And also, now, now that I think about it, you know, this little icon here does, you know, is reminiscent of a tornado. But looks like I won't be leaving Sirens Call anytime soon. And that's awkward. How unfortunate. Goodbyes failed. Try again. Huh. You fail. Game over. You lose. We spent too much time saying goodbye. And therefore... Um... Hmm. You have no new messages. Next day's message. Which one? Go say goodbye to your friends. Alright. Okay. Is it... Was it always August 12th? I, I didn't pay attention to that. Was it always August 12th? It seems like, yeah, it's restarted. You know? Basically, it's, it's been restarted. Uh, we can invest investigate the house again. I don't know if there's any reason to. Now, what do we do? I don't know. Uh, I guess let's leave, leave home? Hmm. Leave home? No, I choose not to leave home? Okay. I leave home. Bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -bum. Bum, bum. Hmm, interesting. We can go there as well. Huh. This house. We can go to her house first, I guess. We can go to the library first as well. I don't know. We have a choice of which friend we can go to. And like, I, I, maybe that affects the story a little bit, maybe? Or maybe not. I'm not sure. We can also go here. So we didn't have a choice to go there before, I feel like. So that's an option as well. Alright, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Let's let's go here first, just because. I, I want to see what happens if we go here. I have no idea. Let's go there. Let's go to the safest place. Is that Violet, by the way? He's painting. If Miss Lawrence, my regards, would you get back from uh, gets back from Denver, all right? Somebody I don't recognize says something to me while I'm walking. Just, just smile and wave. Just smile and wave, boys. Hm. There she is. There she is. We didn't get to meet her before. After all this time looking for her. It turns out Violet was simply painting something on the beach. I shuffle on over to her, right as she's about to snack on one of those famous black bean burgers of hers. Hey there, Oliver. I plant myself next to her in the sand like normal. After I'm good and comfortable, Violet kisses me lightly on the lips and buries her feet a little in the sand. It's still really early in the day. Am I the first person you've come to say goodbye to then? How strange. So anyway, why'd you come to see me now? I don't know, I was just given the option to, to be honest. So I, I just chose it. Are you really done meeting up with everybody else? I thought for sure they want to hang over you more. Hmm. Well, I was looking for you. I could say. Well, let me say the game first. I don't know, because I can, I can definitely go meet with the, our friends again. Perhaps in a different order, but I don't know what that affects me. So, well, let's say I was looking for you. Yeah, that's fair. 
Sorry about that. I just needed to be somewhere lonely for a little bit. Rest. Just, yeah, just to see all the different options. Uh, because it takes so long to walk to the beach. Yeah, that's fair. Sorry about that. Okay. Same thing. What about... I'm more curious as why you're here. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, same thing. She just says the same thing no matter what you say. Same, uh, same answer. Hmm. <clears throat> I just need to be somewhere lonely for a little bit. And nobody really comes to this part of the beach anymore. Well, nobody but us, that is. Things kind of feel different because of that. Helps me process things. Makes for good art. I used to be afraid of solitude, but now I think there's a weird kind of power in it. Knowing I don't need to be completely dependent on someone else to make my sense of, ex of my experiences. Or make sense of my experiences? Now I could just be alone for a bit at the beach. Paint. And then suddenly everything that's happened to us starts to fall into place. It's oddly thrilling. Still, I wish Judith and everybody else didn't just ignore me now. But if I gotta be alone, then I might as well make the most of it. Yeah, and it seems like, yeah, she was only mentioned a few times. I don't know. It seems like Violet is somehow estranged for everybody, maybe? A little bit? Anyway, there's more options. I don't know if it matters, but I'll save again. Mm. You're still your friends. They don't hate you. Is that true? How can you be sure about that? Okay. Progress again. Uh, things should be fine after a while. Is that true? How can you be so sure of that? It, it, it's funny how like no matter what you pick, or Violet anyway, it's the same option. Uh, they'll eventually see your point of view. Is that true? How can you be so sure about that? I know it's a great motivational tool, but sometimes too much conviction can be dangerous, don't you think? A little doubt here and there is probably healthy at this point. Take this painting I'm about to start, for example. I know you're used to seeing me do landscapes, but this time, I'm gonna try and capture the siren that almost ripped off Ashton's hand. Okay, yeah, because Ashton mentioned that, and it was the sirens that, like, you know, those are the monsters that they fought in the underworld, apparently. And so it was a siren that almost, uh, or that did attack Ashton. That's why he had that bandage. Even though he was attacking him, Seeing that happen was the closest thing, or closest I think I've ever been to death. At least consciously, that is. So naturally, I'm trying to turn that experience that's been swimming around in my head into something static and contained. That's my mission here. But if I get overly optimistic and think I've accomplished that goal when I actually haven't, then one day I could, I don't know, see some dog chewing on a park bone or something and have a panic attack. Or start screaming after you see some lions get fed at the zoo. But if I'm patient, but take my time and doubt myself a little, then maybe I can see something new in the paint that I didn't see before. And sure, maybe I won't like it. Maybe what I find won't even be useful. But it's better than just making my life worse by pretending that everything is fine. I'm ranting again. Look, the point is, the six of us spent this whole summer being self-righteous and going fast. And now everything's fucked. But I want to take my time for a little while, that's all. You don't have to try and comfort me with hypotheticals. Neither of us know if everything's going to be alright in the first place. But that's fine. I don't think these doubts of yours are as unhealthy as everybody makes them out to be. By the way, Oliver. There's something that's been bothering me. It's just, you've been listening to me talk about this stuff for quite a while now. And whenever you do say something, it's like one sentence and then you shut up, you know? It's like you're like a, you know, silent protagonist in a JRPG game or something. It's weird. You're normally not this passive. It's like you're spending all this time trying to think of the perfect thing to say. I mean, I'm flattered that you're trying so hard to be a good listener. But it doesn't, hard, it doesn't exactly make for a great conversation, you know? And, well... Kind of feels like I'm just talking at you, 
and not talking with you if that makes any sense. Are you nervous about something, love? It hasn't been like this for you all day. Uh, I just like listening to you talk. I'm assuming it doesn't matter what choice I make here either. But I'm gonna explore it anyway. Just to make sure. Just to make sure. I like listening to you talk. No, that's not what this is. See, right now, what you just said. Regress. Uh, uh, regress. No. That's not the right answer. Uh, I'm a little nervous about college, I guess. No. Nani, I regress. I refuse. I am not in a very talkative mood today. No. Damn it. No matter what I say. See, right now, what you just said. You don't need to try and call me like this, Olive. Can't we just talk with each other like normal? Damn it. This is exactly what I was trying to bring up at our last meeting. Everybody in town is speaking the exact same way. Maureen doesn't chat with me about art anymore when I go, back or go to buy groceries. She just says something like, Nice purchase you made there. And hands me the receipt. The same with the mailman too. Even a bunch of my old teachers. For Christ's sake... Freaky Joe isn't even freaky anymore, you know? It's like everybody's but the six of us. Uh, it's like everybody but the six of us has been lobotomized. And now you're talking the exact same way. Is this my fault? Is this because we killed the seed? Who exactly did we kill Oliver? Damn it. We ended up acting too quickly. There's no reason why we had to tr try to solve this shit before you went to college. It was just another stupid arbitrary goal we set to motivate us. We just didn't want to do this without you. We are being selfish. We could have come back to it later. We could have tried to handle things on our own. We could have told the cops what we thought was going on. We could have... We could have... Damn it, Oliver. Say something. Tell me I'm overreacting. Argue with me. Tell, tell me I'm being silly. You don't have to be a hero anymore. You don't have to say something perfect. Just say something so I know it's really you. Please. Please just say something real. Something real. <laughs> okay, so that's interesting. So the seed was the thing that they destroyed. It was mentioned in the journal, which I, I don't know if I'm... Um, it, you know, it's a kind of a long read, so I don't know if I'm gonna put that on a YouTube video as part of the, I guess, episode, if that makes sense. Maybe I'll, again, I'll maybe put that as a bonus. It depends. Depends if it's important. But anyway, the seed is like the um, the origin of the sirens. You know, the sirens are these is monsters that they fought in the underworld, you know? And what they said in the journal anyway is that if you kill these sirens, you know, some part of like negative emotions are destroyed. However, it seems like, again, or is what I mentioned when I was reading the journal, is like, um, if you destroy all these negative emotions, you're kind of also destroying a part of humanity, right? So it is interesting that what they did might not be the might not have been a good thing, you know, when they destroyed the seed and everything. And that's what that's what Violet is alluding to, which is interesting. Anyway, um, but yeah, she's asking me to say something real. I love you. Please stop worrying. No. No, 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 no. Violet drops to the sand and starts breathing heavily. Let him go. I don't know who or what you are, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry we hurt you somehow. It wasn't personal. We just want to be heroes. We're just a bunch of dumb teenagers that were bored of our lives and wanted to be heroes. Uh, hello, Interland. Does this game have hot sex? I, <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, aren't you the person who got banned from Pokemon? I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? Hmm. Anyway, um, but no, this game does not have hot sex. I guess. Because that would get me banned, I guess. That would be weird if it did, you know? Anyway. Uh, we were just about to bunch of the dumb teenagers that were bored of our lives and wanted to be heroes. Uh, but I guess if you didn't know about this visual novel, 
it is it has an interesting premise to it. You know, it's it's um it's saying goodbye to your friends after an adventure, I guess. Does that make any sense? Like it's as if it's the epilogue of like a JRPG that you just played. But the JRPG doesn't exist, I guess. But there's a well, I guess we'll see. I haven't it's a bit of a slow burn, but it seems like there's some kind of dark implication. Um anyway. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. We're sorry, so let him go. I can handle the rest of the town being brain dead, but not him. He still has so much life to live. So why are you forcing him to be perfect? Wait, is it because we're dating? Is that it? Is that what triggered this? If so, that's stupid. We we're gonna break up later today anyway. We have to. Oh. I don't care if we're together or not, as long as it means he can have his life back. So I'll do it. I will, I promise. So go on. Let him go. Violet walks over to me and grabs my shoulders. A desperate look painted over her pale face. You hear me? I said I'll do it. So let him go. Okay. She begins shaking my body violently. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go? Uh, do we let him go? Let it go. Let it go. Hmm, okay, so it's... Okay, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the implications here are exactly, but it seems like, yeah, apparently... I I, I did mention how, like, the, the, the player that... Or rather, the main character they were playing as did seem like a stereotypical, like, silent protagonist, but he, I guess he wasn't always that way. Nobody seemed to notice except Violet, you know? So it's kind of like we've taken control as the player, right? It's kind of weird. Um... Let him go. No. Daga. Kotowaru. Hey, we're back here. You have no new messages. Okay, that kind of just restarts the game though. So we're just back here. Anyway, so I just wanted to... I, I just want to see what happens if I did say like... If I did let him go. I said no last time, right? So what if I said yes? I said yes. What happens? Oh. What what the? Okay. There's more to this actually. Um. <clears throat> I don't blame you for this, Oliver. It is a disappointment all artists know. The feeling of reaching for something only to have it fade from a grasp the last second. But what will you make of that disappointment? Huh. Okay. Extra little scene there for some reason. Anyway. I just want to go back here because I want to see what happens if I did say yes. Let go. I let him go. Blue skies ahead. Complete. Oliver is no longer bound by his self-inflicted role as a protector. He now has a chance to act independently of that role and its pressures. To keep moving forward, please select continue from the main menu. Uh, okay. That's interesting. Huh. Interesting. Hey, I've completed 10.4% of the game. All right. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Okay. So I guess that might affect the game a little bit. Yeah, um, I was wondering how that affects like, like, did I lose? Did I lose that on some like uh, dialogue? I wonder because you can like uh, interact with your friends in a different order. I don't know if that. Maybe you get a chance to do that later. Anyway. Oh, I guess we'll see. But. I guess by picking the, you know, the option to let him go, I guess, uh, now it's changed the game somewhat. Now, I guess when we press continue, something new will happen. I guess we'll see.